All right. Um, people are still settling in. I'm, I'm not going to do the kind of recap that I, I did the last two lectures. Instead, I'm going to sort of assume that by now we're familiar with the basic notation. And instead, I'm going to begin with a word that I have somehow managed to avoid um, through three lectures, which is uh, this one. So I'm going to begin by, by stating a theorem which um, at least captures some of the cases in which we can actually say that we know um, the Iwasawa main conjecture for elliptic curves. So, so there'll be a number of, of, of hypotheses. So let E over, over Q, that's an elliptic curve as usual. Elliptic curve. Um, and let's let P be a prime such that, and I'm going to list the hypotheses and, and as, as this. So P is going to be odd. E has, um, for the purposes of this talk, I'll, I'll, I'll stick to good um, ordinary reduction. And I'll, I'll say a few words later about how we can relax some of the conditions. Um, good ordinary reduction at P, that the action of the Galois group on the P torsion points is irreducible, so EP is an irreducible um, GQ representation. D. Um, and now there's there's one auxiliary hypothesis that we haven't haven't really seen yet. There exists. a prime L that exactly divides the conductor to order one, which is equivalent to saying there exists a prime L of multiplicative reduction for the elliptic curve, such that, I'm going to write it this way, the, the Galois action on, on the P torsion points is, um, is ramified at L. Uh, this can be stated in a very, very clean way, you, it, um, it, just in terms of, of sort of a minimal model for the elliptic curve at the prime L. You could just say, so if I take the minimal discriminant and I look at the ord L, the power of L that divides that discriminant, then I think I need that to not be divisible by P. Um, so the power of L that divides the minimal discriminant shouldn't be divisible by P. So you can state this in terms of the, an equation for the elliptic curve. But. We're going to stick to the Galois thing. Then, then in fact, the the characteristic ideal of the dual of the Iwasawa Selmer group is equal to the or is generated by the piadic L function of the elliptic curve. That is, the main conjecture is true. is the Iwasawa main conjecture holds for E and B. And I managed to get that all on one slide. So, okay. so this theorem is, is due to, of course, um, many people. Um, the, one of the main ingredients in, in this theorem um, is the work of Kato. So there's, there's two, two sort of big, big inputs. There's the work of Kato that I alluded to yesterday. And what, what Kato um, was able to show, under even more general conditions than this, but, but certainly we'll to this, is that the, um, the Selmer group, the characteristic ideal of the Selmer group, well, I mean, I should. 
maybe I should say, then x of eq infinity, I'll put this in, in parentheses, is, is lambda torsion. That's actually, um, can be proved in much greater generality than, than the, the, the conditions I wrote down. But once it's lambda torsion, then we can really talk about the characteristic ideal and, and things. Okay, so then the characteristic ideal, got to prove, um, divides the periodic L function. Um, I'll say a little bit more in a minute about how this is proved. And th this in itself is already um, a substantial piece of work and, and actually has some interesting consequences. Um, it gives an, another proof of, of, of what we had known through work of, of Gross, Zaghi and, and Kali Wagen, for instance, but also proves it for, for modular forms, which I haven't been able to state. Um, that, so you see, the piatic L function is certainly known to be non-zero, and suppose that the L function then doesn't vanish at the point one, or, or some of these other points, then what that's going to tell us by our, this divisibility tells us then that the specialization, that this characteristic ideal doesn't vanish. And so, in fact, if you go through all those control theorems that I was talking about, it, it says that the order of the Selmer group is actually finite. And so, in particular, the rank of the elliptic curve is, is zero. So you get a, I get a proof that if the L function doesn't vanish, the rank of the elliptic curve is zero, just like Bert Swinner and Dyer tells us. So already just having a divisibility gives you a, gives you a lot. Um, but um, we would like to promote this divisibility to an equality. And um, in this case of the classical Iwasawa main conjecture, it was somehow enough to, to have a divisibility like this. And Iwasawa had already told us that if, if that combined with the class number formula, the analytic class number formula, would, would, would yield an equality. But we don't have that kind of analytic class number formula in this situation. So one wants to sort of establish either a divisibility in the other direction or some other criterion for this to be an equality. So um, one way to, to promote this to, to an equality is um, something that Eric Vaughn and I did, which was just to, to prove the, essentially to prove the other direction. Actually, it's a little more complicated. We end up proving that, that you have um, a divisibility in the other direction, but not sort of like this. You have E over Q infinity, and then you have the product of that, of two periodic L functions. You have E and what I'll decorate with a superscript K. It's the quadratic twist of the elliptic curve by an auxiliary imaginary quadratic field. Um, and so you, you end up proving a, a divisibility like this. So K over Q infinity. Um, K is an auxiliary imaginary quadratic field, which you're free to choose uh, subject to certain conditions. And um, EK is the K-twist. And the K-twist, the choice of this K, the conditions you impose, the K-twist will satisfy all of these conditions as well. Um, it's Q infinity, the Q infinities, yeah. Um, these? Um, and so, but you can see, so, so in particular, actually, Kato's theorem applies both to E and its quadratic twist. Um, and so once you have the individual divisibilities in one direction and the product divisibilities in the other direction, then, then you get equality of, of both. So, and together, there you get equality. Um, all right, so let me say a little bit now about Kato's theorem. Um, and this goes back to this Iwasawa main conjecture without L functions that I talked about yesterday. So, so we had this, this bold T, which was the tape module, uh, tensor lambda, big compact module. And we had this, this sort of this long exact sequence, which was... Well, I, Actually, I'm not sure of my notation. Maybe I wrote 
uh, Selmer relaxed for T. That was the Selmer group, the cohomology group of, um, for the cohomology of T. Un classes were unramified away from P and no condition at P. We could look at the restriction at P to, to H1 QP of, of T. And um, I, I actually projected the image down to the mod, modding out by the image of um, the this, this T plus, right? So T plus was T tensor lambda ZP. And then um, you, the Poitou Tate uh, duality gave us sort of the dual for the restriction of P that's landed actually inside X. And um, the co kernel of that was the strict. Selmer group. So where we ask for the dual of the strict Selmer group, where now the classes are. Um, so this was this S dual um, are, are all trivial at zero. So we have an exact sequence like this. Um, Kato constructed a free lambda module of rank one, and actually we we heard a lot about yesterday about how to construct struct such um, sequence, or this can be think, thought of as sort of a, an inverse limit of, 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 of classes going up some tower. And we heard a lot about yesterday about how to construct classes like this. Um, this is, in fact, this is a base layer of, of Kato's Iwasawa theoretic Euler system. And, um, and, and actually, as I said before, there's sort of a, there's a Coleman map here from Lambda. And the image inside here is under the Coleman map is, is the piatic L function. Um, that's Kato's explicit reciprocity law. And so knowing that this is a base layer of an Euler system, the Euler system machinery takes over um, and says that and tells us, so the Euler system machine that was developed by Kato and, and Rubin um, implies then that See if I get the, the order of this right. The characteristic ideal of the strict Selmer group then divides the characteristic ideal of this relaxed Selmer group divided by Z, Z Kato. So in fact, what it says is that this, this relaxed Selmer group is a lambda module of rank one, and you have this um, the visibility of, of Selmer groups. So this is the equality here is what I was calling the main conjecture without L functions. And and so so how do we, we promote this to the to the, the equality here? Um, or the divisibility the there, sorry, not the equality. Then um, well so you really have now an exact sequence that says I have cell relaxed. T divided by Z Kato. That's an, and an one shows the L that using that this is a lambda module of rank one plus the um, hypothesis of being residually irreducible gives an injection. That, that, that restriction map now is an injection of this H1 QP T modulo, this, this, the image of the H1 QP T plus. And the the image of of the under the restriction map of Zikato, so you mod out by that. Um, but this is isomorphic to the Coleman map to lambda mod mod the piatic L function, and now we have uh, the x that we're interested in, and the x strict into zero. This is torsion. This is torsion. So this and this. And this, so this being torsion means that this is torsion by, by that equality. And so I've sandwiched the object that we're interested in between a bunch of torsion lambda modules. So all together that implies that this is a torsion lambda module. So that was one part of the, the Iwasawa main conjecture. So Kato proves that, that X is um, a torsion lambda module. But not only that, characteristic ideals behave well in exact sequences.
And so we also have then that the, this characteristic ideal times this characteristic ideal be equal to the characteristic ideal of this times the characteristic ideal of that. All right, let's try to write that down. Times the characteristic ideal of x is actually equal to the characteristic ideal of the, the x strict times um, the characteristic ideal of, of this, which I can now think of as, as lambda modulo the piatic L function. So let's see if I get the order. So this, do I have that right? Yeah. So this is dividing this. So this has to divide that. It's this. So this divides that, right? So in particular, the characteristic ideal of x divides the characteristic ideal of, of lambda modulo, uh, the piatic L function. But I know that characteristic ideal. That is, in fact, just the piatic L function. So that's, that's how you get one, one divisibility with L function from the divisibility without L function. All right. Um, so now, so what about the other divisibility? So somehow we want now to show that the characteristic ideal is large. Here we are bounding the characteristic ideal, or the size of the cylinder group, by the piatic L function. And now we want to show that there's, enough, there's at least as much stuff as the piatic L function inside our Selmer group. And so we actually have to, to, to prove that there are things in the Selmer group. So if that piatic L function is not zero, we're saying that the Selmer, the Selmer group is, is, is large, or is not I guess if the Selmer piatic L function is not a unit, then we're saying that the Selmer group is, is large. Um, and so we're actually going to, to want to produce elements in Selmer groups. And uh, how, do you, how do you do that? Um, so one way is, is to think about elements as Selmer groups as extensions, Galois extensions um, with certain properties. So I'm, I'm just going to be, I, I think I alluded to this earlier when I was talking about the block Cotto things. And so I'm going to just sort of remind you very simply that if I, if I look at H1, um, sort of Q of, of some, here let's take some vector space just for a moment, then, then this classifies um, extensions um, looking, looking like this. Um, and extensions as, as GQ representations, maybe GQP. So V is supposed to be a QP vector space, just for simplicity here, with the continuous action of, of G, the Galois group of Q. Um, what's the class corresponding to, to the extension X? Uh, you can take, there's various ways to, to do this, and they're all equivalent. I mean, you can just take the long exact cohomology sequence associated to, to the short exact one, and you'll have QP mapping into to the H1 Q of of V, and so the image of one is is the um, the class of this extension. Um, alternately, you can just take an element X that that projects to one here, and you look at um, sigma of X minus X is a cocycle taking values in V, and the class of that cocycle very explicitly is the class of the extension. And then you can sort of see how if you have if you have a cocycle then you can cook up the extension just by unwinding what we just did. Um, and so now our summer groups are subgroups of things like this, and what we, what we just have is some local conditions. And so, for example, being trivial on the inertia group at a prime means that this extension just splits. It's a split extension when you restrict it to, to the Galois group of the inertia of the local field or something like that. Um, so we're looking, at, we're looking for groups of extensions uh, in the category of, of, of Galois modules that satisfy certain local properties. And those local properties are just that they split in, in certain ways. But we need to construct these things. Um, 
And um, one of our, our best sources of Gawa representations is automorphic forms. And so um, you might, so it's sort of natural to go looking for, for these extensions in uh, as sub quotients, maybe the Gala representations attached to, to automorphic forms. And we've already seen this in um, the proof of the classical Iwasawa main conjecture that was sketched in, in Romyar's second lecture. So what, what, did, what was the strategy there? So the strategy was that you have an Eisenstein series Eisenstein series with constant term um, an L value of interest. In that case, if you just wrote down the classical Eisenstein series of weight of level one, say of, of weight two k, then the constant term is zeta of one minus two k divided by two, so it has the zeta value of interest. Um, and then, so then. So then this becomes congruent to a cusp form modulo the constant term. So if you had a prime that divided, right, zeta of 1 minus 2k, then you reduce your Eisenstein series modulo the prime. The constant term is 0 mod, mod the prime. So it looks like, a, like an Eisenstein series. Or it looks like, I'm sorry, the Eisenstein series now looks like a cusp form modulo the prime. And then you, you Make this precise, and and then you use the Galois representation associated to to the cusp form. And then you use the Galois representation associated to to the the cusp the cuspidal eigen eigenforms. Um, cuspidal eigenforms or represent automorphic representations. Um, so that worked very well to prove the, Iwas, the classical Iwasawa main conjecture, and it was exploited by, by you know, carried out by Wiles to even prove the, the classical Iwasawa main conjecture over totally real fields. Um, and so what Eric and I did was basically do the same strategy, but for an Eisenstein series whose constant term now sees the, the L function of uh, the elliptic curve. Um, So there's a well-developed theory of Eisenstein series, um, going back to, to the work of Langlands. And, and in fact, um, it was by studying Eisenstein series and their constant terms that Langlands even came up with the notion of an automorphic uh, L function. And um, the, general, the general definition. Um, so you can start up. To explain this. Um, so, so, how do you get an Eisenstein series on GL2? You start off with characters of the torus, which you can now think of as characters of the Borel subgroup. So you have GL2, you have, you have, have the, the Borel, A, B, 0, D, inside there. And you start off with, with characters chi1 and, and chi2, and we can view them as giving us a character of the diagonal. Chi one of a, chi two, chi two of d. So you can look at um, functions from from GL two to to c. Um, maybe GL two of the Adels, and you would have since that f of a b zero d of, of g would be chi one of a, chi two of b f of g. So this is d d. Thank you d. Um, this is an induced representation. I'm taking the, a, a one-dimensional representation of, of the Borel group, uh, the upper triangular group, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at a, a space of functions where I'm sort of act, the left translation, I'm acting by that, by the Borel, I act by that character. So this is nothing more than an induced representation. And then the general sort of notion of an Eisenstein series would be that I would, I would sum, um, so the Eisenstein series associated to such a such a function f would be I would I would sum over the gammas in uh, sort of GL2 of Q modulo the Borel of Q. So these were supposed to be adelic characters of 
of f of, of, of gamma of g. So I sort of average it out, and I get a I get a function of the whole group. And this is this this is the uh, the definition of Eisenstein series on on, on GL two. And then you you take its con you can sort of take a Fourier expansion of these things, um, integrating against uh, the unipotent radical of, of the Borel, and and you end up with um, with the, an, an Euler product, actually. This was Langland's great great observation. And then you unwind what that Euler product is, and it turns out to be an L function related to the characters chi1 and chi2. And you can do this much more generally. So, um, and so, in, uh, in work of um, Langland's and then completed by Shahidi, we know exactly which automorphic L functions show up as the constant terms of, of Eisenstein series. So um, you can go looking for the situations where the L function of a cusp form of, on GL2 shows up in the constant term of an Eisenstein series, and there's a couple of places to look. The, the most natural ones that show up are, are GL3, GSP4 or SP4, and GU22, a unit, unitary group, or, or, or forms of GU22. Um, GL3, which seems like maybe the simplest of those groups, doesn't give rise to a Shimura variety. It has an associated symmetric space of real dimension 5. So it doesn't have a, a related um, algebraic variety. And so when you're trying to do arithmetic, you want some sort of integral structure. And the integral structures are sort of most easiest to use when they're coming from algebraic geometry. So maybe GL3 is not the, not the best, best place to go looking for, for, for the analog of what we did for, um, for GL2. Um, GSP4 seems promising. There is a Shimura variety. But the Eisenstein series that you construct is not a holomorphic modular form. So it's not a classical Ziegel modular form. It's kind of tantalizing because it contributes to the cohomology, the Betty cohomology. You can find it is sort of in the boundary cohomology of, of, of the symmetric space. But again, there's no nice integral structure. How did we prove congruences for our Eisenstein series and our cusp forms in GL2? We just looked at the Q expansions, the Fourier expansions. We know from the Q expansion principle that comes out of geometry that, that sort of co congruences between cusp forms and things um, are, are, are reflected in congruences between Q expansions. Um, OK, so then you waste a lot of time thinking about GSP4. And then finally, you realize that you should probably move on to uh, a unitary group. And so in fact, it turns out that you can look at a unitary group of, of signature 2, 2, but that involves an imaginary quadratic field. Um, and that, that, that you can find a uh, Eisenstein series on this, th this group, which gives rise to a, a holomorphic modular form for the, on, on the symmetric space, but whose constant term also is the, the L function of, of interest. Actually, it's the L function of interest times a Dirichlet L series, but we think we understand Dirichlet L series. Um, so so you, you go there. but. Um, on you, to define the unitary group, you have to introduce an, uh, an auxiliary imaginary quadratic field. And so you get not just the L function of the elliptic curve, but the L function of the elliptic curve and its um, uh, k-twist. If I tried to write the definition, that would be an entire other lecture series. So, but um, but there's, there's, a, there's a parabolic here. Um, so as a levy decomposition, so it's levy m and its unipotent radical n, and, and the levy is gu11 across um, the restriction of scalars from, from k to q of, of gm, of gl1. And gu11 can very explicitly, in this, this case, be written as um, gl2 of q cross k cross um, divided by Q cross embedded diagonally in there, or you can, and or embedded, you can embed it as a a inverse or embedded diagonally. So what you can think of this is I I, I have GL very explicitly. This is GL two Q, and I've just extended the center from Q to K cross, or from Q cross to K cross, and so 
if I start off with a modular form f, maybe associated to my elliptic curve, I can get I get a function or an automorphic representation pi on, on GL2q, and I can pick a, a character psi, a heck of character of k cross, or of the adels of k cross, subject to the condition maybe that 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 the central character of pi should be psi restricted to to a q cross, and and this will give me um, a representation on the GU11 factor of the levy, and, but then I'm also free to choose anything on uh, over here, another Hecke character, because this is this is also just K cross thought of as a group scheme over over Q, um, and so I have I can have a freedom to even to choose an, another Hecke character. So there's a lot of freedom here, um, and so even though I'm I can't vary if I just had looked at the GU11 part, I can't vary. Um, in the cyclotomic direction, my, my character, because I'm, I'm forced to be, to be fixed on the, on the restriction to the Adels over Q, and that's where the cyclotomic variation is coming from, because we're, that's just the cyclotomic extensions of Q. But because of this chi, there's this complete freedom to vary, vary in the cyclotomic direction. So, um, so this allows us, allows us to vary in the cyclotomic direction. Direction, and um, and the, the L function that you, you you get in the constant term is built out but out of out of these, and it's some uh, it's going to end up being L of pi twisted by some variation, probably some chi, but or something like this in in the constant term, um, probably. Probably like a chi over psi, but um, and so in fact, not only can you vary in the cyclotomic direction, you vary in the anti-cyclotomic direction. So you really can, you end up you have, you have a two-variable family of, of L functions here. So you have not just the ZP extension coming from Q, but you have the full ZP extension of K. So you, with then the, the maximal sort of um, ZP to the D extension of, of K as as rank two, um, and um, and then much as in, um, in Romeo's talk, you can also vary your modular forms into HEDA families. And so, in fact, you end up with a three-variable family of Eisenstein series, where you're varying the modular form, and that's sort of varying in the weight. So there's a weight variable for the modular form. And then there's two variables coming from the character chi, as you're varying over all sort of um, finite characters in the um, in the ZP squared extension of K, so you, you get something. Quite, so you, and then you end up proving a, a three-variable divisibility, and then you get the one-variable divisibility they wrote down before by specializing that one. But ultimately, you're running through this exact same same strategy. Um, Let me say just a little bit about what happens with the, the extensions that you, you end up with. Um, so GU22, these give rise to four-dimensional Galois representations. So GU22 goes to, to four-dimensional representations of, of the, the Galois group of K. Your Eisenstein series, the Eisenstein series of interest, they, there's still four-dimensional Galois representations that are determined by the Hecke eigenvalues of, of the Eisenstein series, but they're reducible. So just like in the case of GL2, classical Eisenstein series, their Galois representations are the sum, sum of two characters. Um, here we get not necessarily sum of two characters, but we get a four-dimensional Galois representation that's built out of Galois representations of smaller dimensions. So if we had f, psi, and, and, and chi as before, um, this gives rise to, to, to a Galois representation that has the Galois representation of rho f. So if f was associated to our elliptic curve, this is our Galois representation on the tape module of the elliptic curve. And then there's two other characters, chi1 and chi2, that are related to psi and, and chi. And so you end up with um, these, these three representations. And so you have to worry about, when you take your lattice, which extensions show up. Um, so you, you take take a lot of you, you can get extensions in here and extensions in here and ex maybe 
it's not quite an extension, it's some even deeper in, in there, or it might have been down here or something like this, so you have to be a little bit careful in, in which order these characters, Chi 1 and Chi 2, show up so you make sure that ultimately you get something the, of the kind that you're, that you're interested in. And for us, for elliptic curves, um, if we're looking, you know, you might be, if you're just interested in the central value of the elliptic curve, you can get, you end up with, 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 with something like, like one, epsilon is the cyclotomic character in row of E, um, and you would like to get an ex extension in, in this order, and you have to rule out the possibility that you've, got, you've constructed extensions down, down here. So you would like to get this and not get, get this. And so there's, there's some analysis with the, with, with the Gower representations and the lattices that's a little more complicated than, than in the classical case. That's, um, well, that's, this is pi. This is what's giving you the Eisenstein series. Sorry, um, I, well, I'm, I'm choosing this. This is, this is, this is the data I, I choose to construct the Eisenstein series. So the question was, where, what, where do you, where do you, where does this triple come from? This is the triple I'm giving myself. So I'm making a good choice of a modular form and two Hecke characters. That, that, having made such a choice, I get an Eisenstein series by some sort of well-understood process. Associated with that Eisenstein series is a Galois representation, which is, is really just um, a, a sum of a, two one-dimensional Galois representations and a two-dimensional Galois representation. The congruence between the Eisenstein series and, and the cusp form um, is then exploited. The cusp form has a, a Galois representation that has relatively large image, and so I can choose a lattice inside that representation so that when I reduce it modulo the congruence of the Eisenstein series, I, I pick up non-split um, extensions here. But then I have to worry about which exact extensions that I get and to show that I get extensions that are actually in the Selmer group of interest. This is, um, that's about four lectures right there. But, um, all right. Um, but the carry, the carry away from this is that all we do is, is take this idea of ribbit, and, and actually, I, I think even, even that idea goes back to Greenberg, um, and, um, and run through uh, the same kind of argument, uh, but just using a more complicated group. So. Um, so ultimately, that leads to the opposite divisibility to Kato, and, and then in combination, as I said, a, a, the equality in, in the main, main conjecture. Um, let's think about some of the consequences of, of having a theorem like this one. So let me pull that, that, that theorem back up. So, we, so now we have the main conjecture. So if you've done all that work, you, you want some payoff. Uh, so, um, some consequences. Uh, so we had this um, very exact control theorem. So the first, the first consequence I want to talk about then is just under the assumption that the elliptic curve is not zero. And as I, I already noted, from the, um, just from Kato's divisibility, you get a, already another proof that the rank of the elliptic curve is, is zero. So you have that the rank of, of EQ is zero. And, um, but we also had, had a, 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 an expression for the order of the quotient of, of the x by gamma minus 1, or the gamma minus 1 torsion in the big Selmer group in terms of the value of the generator of the characteristic ideal. So what did we have? So we had that the, the order of x mod, mod gamma minus 1 of x was given by the value, the size of, of, of lambda modulo the p-adic L function. Um, 
of Q also at, at gamma minus one. And on this side, we're getting then the order of Z, Zp modulo the value of the gam, of, of the piatic L function at the trivial character. And so this was um, one minus one over alpha P squared times L E of one over over omega of E. And, uh, and, and when L E of one is not zero, so this is this is finite. And and then on this side, our our, our analysis from our control theorem told us that this was the size of the um, P infinity Selmer group of, of the elliptic curve times the product over the, the primes of bad reduction of the Tamagawa factors, or at least the P parts of those Tamagawa factors. It was the unramified um, part. What's that? Uh, Q. This is just, this one's just Q. Uh, oh, Q infinity. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and then there was this correction term that was um, the order of, of, of Zp modulo alpha p minus one, and then we had this, this, the square of that. And because the, the, and so this is finite over here under the assumption that L one is not zero, so in fact, the order of the summer group is finite, so that is the, the same as the, the summer group's the same as the tate Shafarevich group. We can, we can cancel the one minus one over, I mean one minus one over, alpha p was a unit, so I can also think of this as alpha p minus one squared, so that cancels with that. So as a consequence, what we have on this side is the order of the tate shafarevich group of, of Q, or at least it's p primary part, and then we have the product of the, the Tamagawa factors at the primes of bad reduction so we, I'm going to write it that way as I was before. So that's the power of P that divides that. That's just the same as the order order there. That that's equal to this, the order of Zp modulo Le over 1 normalized by the period. But that's, that's just the power of P that divides Le at 1 over, over omega of Ep minus, well, minus 1. So we have that the power of P dividing um, L e v, the, the, the central critical value L e of 1 divided, normalized by its period is in fact the power of P predicted by the Burtz, Swinnert, and Dyer conjecture. The reason that there's no denominator here is we made this assumption of irreducibility of the action of the Galois group Q on, e, on the P torsion points. So in particular, there's no rational P torsion. So the, there'd be no power of P in the denominator. So we get the, we get the BSD formula. We get the p part of the BSD formula. So that's that's sort of a nice nice payoff from a theorem like that. Um, there's a there's a second consequence, even when 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 Le of one is equal to zero. And then uh, as we noted in in our control theorems, then we still have this equality. As long as we interpret both sides to mean that when, or, or interpret it to mean that when one side is infinite, the other side is infinite. So, so we also have this. So that this implies then that x over gamma minus one of x that the size is is infinite. And we we might not have had this exact equality, but uh, we had it up to some finite co-kernel. And so this, this implies that the order of the p infinity, which is the only thing in there that's not obviously finite on, in this expression, is, is, is infinite. That is, that is this, the usual p infinity Selmer group over q must have, has co-rank um, greater than or equal to one, has positive co-rank, in which, if we think about it, remember we had this exact sequence of, of E of Q tensor QP mod ZP landing inside, so P infinity of, of AV over Q, and the co-kernel was the P primary part of, of the, the tate shafarevich group. So 
our expectation is the Tate Shepherd average group is finite, so if so the cell P infinity should have um, positive co rank if and only if the rank of the elliptic curve is, is non zero. And of course Bertson and Dyer tells us that we should expect um, the, the elliptic curve to have positive rank when the L function vanishes. So this theorem isn't going to, I'm not saying anything about rational points, but I'm saying something at least that's consistent with Bertson and Dyer. So you can think of this as sort of evidence towards it, that when the L function is zero, it vanishes, that the Selmer group um, it has, has infinite order positive co-rank, which it must have if the rank of the elliptic curve were to be positive. Um, so you can think of that as sort of evidence towards the, the, the rank part of, of, of BSD. Um, and I don't know, well, I was going to say I don't know a theorem, I mean a proof of this that doesn't go through Iwasawa theory, but that's not quite true, but it's pretty close. Um, let me, uh, oh well, there's, there's the second consequence. Um, so just some, some, some final remarks. This, this theorem is far from the last word on, on what we know about um, the main conjecture. Um, if E has, has complex multiplication by an imaginary quadratic field, the Iwasawa main conjecture, then the main conjecture, the Iwasawa main conjecture was proved by Rubin. Long before this, this theorem. And in that, in Rubin's case, so you could prove the Iwasawa main conjecture by knowing just one of the divisibilities that I wrote down because you can relate that main conjecture to the main conjecture for the imaginary quadratic field and you do have analytic class number formulas for the imaginary quadratic field and its extensions. Um, and so, so you can promote one of those divisibilities to an, to an equality through, through the analytic class number formula. And so Rubin proved, proved this by by constructing an Euler system, the Euler system of elliptic units. Um, all right, uh, there are other th things. Um, the hypotheses under which Cato proves his divisibility and um, that we prove our divisibility are not identical, they just happen to have a large sort of class of curves for which they overlap. So uh, one thing is that uh, Cato's Cato's um, Iwasawa main conjecture without um, L functions holds also for E um, having super singular reduction. But what I said about Coleman maps is a lot more complicated. Um, and there's been substantial development in, in, in sort of in that direction by a number of the people in, in the audience, um, including some of the other speakers. Um, there's ver the work, um, some of the, there, there's sort of examples um, in which some of the cri criteria in this um, theorem can be can be relaxed. So there was there was work of Greenberg and, and Watzel. Um, they pro prove the Iwasawa main conjecture for cases where um, this mod p Gawa representation is reducible. Is reducible, and our, our proof crucially uses the irreducibility in, in many in many cases, and so they actually use this reducibility to, to sort of bootstrap from the main classical main conjecture, the main conjecture from for elliptic curves. I mean, not for elliptic curves, but for Dirichlet characters in combination with with, with Cato's work. Um, uh, there's cases so that that's sort of eliminating. Um, Okay, so, so this two sort of references 
the, relaxing the hypotheses in B, three is sort of relaxing the hypotheses in C, and there's even been recent work that sort of provides a criteria under which you, which you can check to relax the hypotheses in D. So we now have examples of, of elliptic curves whose, whose conductors are square full, so they don't have this L that's a multiplicative reduction there, but, but which you, we can still prove, prove the main conjecture. Or, um, and so there's criteria for, for establishing the Iwasawa main conjecture um, when the prime L exactly dividing E, uh, I should say this, doesn't exist. <laughs> doesn't exist. And so there, there's, I think, um, some papers on, on that by, uh, available in the archive by uh, Chan Ho Kim and, and his, his collaborators. Um, so there there's continues to be a lot of work on on the main conjectures, and um, this is, as I said, is not only far from the last word, it actually seems kind of almost out of date. Um, there, there's been work on the super singular cases of, of the main conjecture. Uh, some beautiful work constructing the, the L functions and, and, uh, and also defining the, the right Selmer groups. And I think Ralph may even allude to, to the some of the difficulties, at least, that, that come up when you're trying to deal with elliptic curves with super singular reduction in his, his talk this afternoon. Um, I think I actually managed to fill up my time, so I'll stop. Any questions? In the corollary number one, uh, like on the slide just behind it. Um, so there is, uh, you said that it implies some sort of P part of BSD. So what interferes to, imply, to get BSD from it? Um, so the question is, what do I mean when I say that this implies the P part of, that what I'm saying here is something to do with the P part of Burt's Winter and Dyer? So what, what would, let's, let's kind of recall what, the BSD is, right? So there's two parts of it. There's the order of vanishing at S equals 1 of, of L e of S is equal to the rank of the elliptic curve. That's the part that you get paid money for. The rest of it you just do for fun. Um, and, and so if we call that, that R, then, then the, the Take the, the rth derivative divided by r factorial omega of e and, and the regulator of the mordel Vey group, that this is supposed to be the order of, of the tate shafarevich group um, divided by the, be the order of, of the, the rational, or the square of the order of the rational torsion times times the product of, of the Tamagawa factors. And so, so what I'm saying is that when the elliptic the L function of the elliptic curve doesn't vanish at one, so the order of vanishing is zero, then, then in fact, Kato's divisibility already through our analysis of the, of the of Selmer groups and characteristic ideals will, will tells us that the rank of the elliptic curve is zero. You can get this through the gross zagier coli um work as well, but you get a new proof out of, out of, out of Kato's work. And, and then the equality of the main conjecture um, had this con th these consequences, that the order of the dual the summer group divided by gamma minus one is given by the, the sort of the, the constant term of the generator of the characteristic ideal, and since that characteristic ideal is the piatic L function, we know that that constant term, that the value of that, that generator at t equals zero is given by um, L e of one over omega one with this little correction term. And on the other hand, our analysis of, of what this is in terms of the size of the summer groups, gave what said that was equal to the order of the, the p infinity part of the summer group times some Tamagawa factors, again times a correction term at p. And so the, what this inequality equality here is saying is that exactly the p, in the case where r is equal to zero, um, the power of p dividing this side is equal to the power of p dividing that side. And that's what I mean by the p part of the Burt Swinnerton Dyer formula. Uh, 
oh, because we're only analyzing, okay, so we're analyzing this at just at the prime p. And you could say, well, we, maybe we're doing this at every prime p. But we're only doing this at primes that satisfy the hypotheses of this, this theorem. So that's a lot of primes. Um, but it's not all of them. And in fact, there are, inf for example, there are infinitely many primes of super singular reduction, and those are excluded. Um, where primes of good ordinary reductions so are excluding the, the primes of bad reduction. Actually, I should say this theorem can, is extended to the place of multiplicative k reduction, so that's, we can forget about the, the good part there. Um, and then there's this, this, this part D is actually will hold for almost all primes as well. So this holds for a lot of primes, but not all of them, and that's why it's not, a, a, it's not an equality on the nose. And so we have to work, there's still work to be done. And that's, that's right, that's your job. Um, but in fact, we now know under similar hypotheses the super singular main conjecture, which gives us this, this p part at the super singular primes of, of the good super singular primes. And so it's really primes of additive reduction and this prime p equals two where, where, where things are missing. But yeah. But not, yeah. Right. All right, well, why don't we uh, thank Chris again and take a 10-minute break.